Good morning. If you're here for the live show, sorry, it's running a little late. Um, sat down and the computer thought it was time to do an update. So <laughs> we're finally here. We're finally ready. So if you're ready for a story, I'm ready for a story. Are you ready for a story? Okay. If you're ready for a story, gather around. If you're ready for a story, gather around. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, gather round. If you're ready for a story, please sit down. If you're ready for a story, please sit down. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, please sit down. Wow, Rainbow, you're in good form this morning. <laughs> oh, you're a good boy. <laughs> yes, you are. Are you going to join me when I read the kids' stories over the summer? No. Oh, you mean yes. Okay, good, good, good. I think they would miss you. <laughs> All right, can you have a seat over there? Oh, well, good morning. Here we are on our last official day of Miss Kim's story time for the year. We're doing our letter Z, which is the final letter of the alphabet. And where we go from here, who knows? But like I said, I'm going to try and read a story every week. Oh, me and Rainbow. <laughs> just one story. No craft, just a story. If you like to hear a story, we'll do it live, but then you can listen to it later, too, if you want to. I'll try to pick, maybe we'll pick a little bit longer story. But we'll soon be starting our summer reading program, so make sure that you um, check with us to how, learn how to get registered for summer reading. We're going to start registration early this year on June 1st. The programming won't start till the middle of the month, but we will be starting registration early, and it's online again this year. So we've got lots of exciting things planned. Our, the programming is called Tales and Tales. So tales like as in animal tales and tales like as in stories. And we're going to be having a petting zoo at the fairground, like where we have the town celebration. And we're going to do a safari walk up in Manhattan. I think it's going to be pretty exciting. So it might not be our normal summer reading again, like it wasn't last year, but we're trying to have a little bit more in-person time together. Hopefully next year we'll be back to our regular, regular scheduled program. <laughs> All right, enough of that. Let's start story time. The letter Z. Z. Serena, who works here, has a horse, and that's what they call him, Z. It's short for a name that I don't remember now because it's kind of a funny name. But Z. Zzz. It sounds like a bee, doesn't it? Zzz. <laughs> That's the sound that Z makes. Zzz. Really buzzy. Zzz. <laughs> so, names that start with... Oh, you know what? Let's not get going there yet. All these pop-ups want to pop up in front of what I'm doing here. Let's get some sillies out before we get any farther because you might just have some zany sillies that you need to get out. All right, let's do that. We're going to shake, shake, shake our sillies out. Shake, shake, shake our sillies out. Shake, shake, shake our sillies out and wiggle our waggles away. We're going to shake, shake, shake our sillies out. 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 And Wiggle or waggles away. Yay! <laughs> I bet if you didn't know that song when it started this year, you certainly know it by now. <laughs> okay. And the letter C. What? We know what it sounds like. I already did that. So, what are some words that start with C? Let's do our names first. Again, just like last week and the week before, there are a lot of names in our language that start with Z. But one of my favorites, 
Zoe starts with Z. Zelda. Zara. Sounds like Sarah, kind of. Zara. 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 Isn't that a pretty name? I like that. For the boys, Zachary, which can be shortened to Zach. Xander. Zane. Famous author, Zane Gray, who wrote Westerns. And Zeke, which is actually short for Ezekiel, but you can hear how they chopped that first part off and just went with Zeke. All right. And again, with all of our foods and animals, there's not a lot. But you might know zucchini. Big and green, they look like a cucumber, but they're bigger. Zucchinis. They eat a lot of those in the summer. And ziti. We're like, what's a ziti? It's a type of pasta. You know, like spaghetti. Mm -hmm. They're usually hollow in the center, you know, like a tube. Um, but they're not round, they're not curved like an elbow macaroni. A ziti. And the only other thing I could find was Zinfandel grapes, which is a type of grape. Um, so I thought I'd include because it's just not a lot. Words. There are a surprising number of words that you will know. Zoo. Zero. Zipper. Zoom. <laughs> zap. <laughs> and zany. Which is kind of like crazy if you don't know that word. Animals. Zebra. That's it. Lots of other ones out there. You're not going to know what any of those animals are. There's the zebra finch, which finch is a little tiny bird, and it has some stripes. <laughs> like all the zebra finch, but zebra. Zebra. <laughs> ah, right. So, let's look at the books that we had. And I have a stack of them. I think I'd have so many books for the letter Z. do the two we're doing first. Okay, a bunch of zoo books. This one is from our library. A lot of these are from our library this time, which is nice. This is A Day at the Zoo, which actually has real pictures of some real pictures and some drawing pictures of animals at the zoo. Miss Moo goes to the zoo from our library. Free Zoo. This is a really cute book and it was definitely a possibility to read. This little girl was frightened the first time she went to the zoo. She doesn't remember what frightened her, but her parents try and help her figure that out so they can go and have a fun time at the zoo the next time. So Free Zoo. That's ours. My heart is like a zoo. All of the animals in the book are made out of different heart shapes. This would be fun to get and maybe make use for um, patterns for Valentine's Day. This is from James B. Brown. Okay, now on to zebra books. Oh, there are a lot of those too. This one, I know this is not where it come from. This one comes to us from Hughesville. Myla's Big Day which has, as you can see, an actual real-life picture of the zebra. And so it has lots of pictures of zebras, if you'd like to see real pictures of zebras. Well, what if a zebra lost its stripes? This is ours. Jungle Tales, which has a trio of animals, a hippo, a zebra, and a tiger, who get into all sorts of zany situations. And that comes to us from Hughesville as well. And I've used this one before. Shanty, which is a story about a zebra. And um, there's a fire in the area where, he, where Shanty lives. So it's a very exciting story. But um, Miss Kim is having a little bit of issue with her eyes and a lot of the, the writing was hard to read, so I decided not to read this today. This is a really nice story, but very colorful. 
Bring it on in. It comes to us from Mentorsville Library, Conkle. Last one before we see the ones that we're reading. Zin, zin, zin goes the violin. Mimicking or doing what, if you were here for the music here, onomatopoeia, words that are what sounds sound like, like buzzing bee. Zin, zin, zin goes the violin. I had it for our V day and I forgot I had it, so it wasn't even shown. I'm like, zin, 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 let's go. That's a sound, zin. Okay. But we are going to read today a zoo book. It is also about music. Never play music next to the zoo, right next to the zoo. If you. Oh, the Zin 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 book is from, uh, from James C. Brown. This is our book, and it comes with a CD of the man who wrote the book, John Lithgow, reading the book. And I bet it has some nice music in the background. I've not listened to it, but it's nice to have a book that can be read to you whenever you want to read it. And this is ours. And then the Zinc, the Zebra, came to us from Hughesville. They had all our books this week. <laughs> um, and a story about a zebra that doesn't look quite right. This was actually a promotion, very promoted in the Girl Scout program about 10 years ago. So, um, to promote, it's okay to be different. <laughs> different is good and not bad. Okay. So, a little bit longer introduction there. Oh, 12 minutes already. <laughs> Let, oops, oh dear. The CD wants to fall out of our never play music <laughs> right next to the zoo. Okay. This is a big wide book, so it's a little challenging to show you. So, let's see what we can do here. Mm. I'll try to show you the page. page. It's hard to. Either get in or out of this picture. Okay. I went to a concert when I was a lad. No, older than many of you. I sat with my sister, my mother, my dad, at a band shell right next to the zoo. See the zoo sign? And it said free concert tonight. So that means lots of people are going to. The summer... The soft summer air was so balmy and sweet, and the program was running so long that I found myself falling asleep in my seat despite all the music and song. All at once, the conductor erupted with rage a band of wild animals was storming the stage. <laughs> oh, children, remember whatever you, whatever you may do, never play music right next to the zoo. They'll burst from their cages each beast and each bird desperate to play all the music that they have heard. The lions and elephants, the bears and raccoons will steal away trumpets, flutes and bassoons. in there. Replace the musicians and chase them away, then they'll sit in the band shell and play. <laughs> I like the camel. I 
these guys. The monkeys played fiddle. The bison played bass. The percussion was manned by the camel. Over here. The yak, there's our yak from last week. The yak played the sax until red in the face, a surprisingly musical mammal. The bonobo played the oboe, the ferret, the flute, the jackal attacked the bassoon. That's what's happening here. This page. The hippo had chosen the tuba to toot by the light of the silvery moon. Siberian tigers, Mongolian goats, a super abundance of bestial notes. As the animal orchestra filled up the air, with chaos, confusion, and clatter, the audience calmly continued to stare as if nothing were the matter. I don't know, that doesn't look terribly calm. <laughs> I think that's our guy telling our story now. <laughs> I trembled with terror, suppressing a scream, while my parents just sat there enraptured. Oh, how I wished it was only a dream and those creatures all safely recaptured. But since, but since by the minute I'd grown less afraid, I decided to sit back and watch while they played. Big picture. Of the whole concert scene. They finished and each put away his instrument. They finished and each put his instrument down, then bowed and descended the stage. Each shed his tuxedo or evening gown and hurried back home to their cage. Then each reminisce so grateful and glad, so full of contentment and pride. My mother, meanwhile, strolled away with my dad and my sister remained by my side. I don't know about you, I think he looks a little sleepy. Page to turn. She tugged on my sweater and spoke in my ear. You better wake up or we're leaving you here. Oh, 
children, remember, whatever you do, never play music right next to the zoo. They'll burst from their cages, each, each beast and each bird desperate to play all the music that they've heard. Now never play music right next to the zoo and pay strict attention to rule number two. <laughs> Bear it in mind for the rest of your days. <laughs> Don't fall asleep when an orchestra plays. There's our hippo with her tuba. I thought that was a nice story. Like all the animals, the zoo, and the music. It's just lovely. I hope you enjoyed that one. It was one of my favorites. I love John Lithgow's writing. And that story is especially nice. Here's another one about a manatee if you're interested. Okay, let's see. What do we have? Must be time for a song or something. Ah. I'm going to lead into our zebras. So. I didn't have a poem about a zoo or anything that I particularly liked. So this is to the tune of London Bridges. I think we did a London Bridges song based last week too. <laughs> London Bridges. This is zany zebras are zipping by. Got as many Z's in that as we possibly could. Zany zebras are zipping by, zipping by, zipping by. Zany zebras are zipping by, zip, zap, zoom. <laughs> okay, you guys ready to try that? Zany zebras are zipping by, zipping by, zipping by. Zany zebras are zipping by, zip, zap, zoom. <laughs> One more time. Zany zebras are zipping by, zipping by, zipping by. Zany zebras are zipping by, zip, zap, zoom. <laughs> Okay. Oops, did it go? I didn't put them all away. There's our zebra. Sink the zebra. This is a nice short book to go with our longer book that we just read. Because I think it's going to take us a little while to do our zebra. Some people in Europe say zeb instead of zebra. Zebra. <laughs> we have a zebra. <laughs> so there's Okay. Zinc the zebra. Very nice pictures. Once upon a time, a zebra named Zinc lived in the Lipsis jungle with her mother, her father, and her brother, Fink. Would you like to see that? There we go. There we go. Mom, Dad, Zinc, and Fink. I think maybe they should put Link. I think it's not a very nice thing. Okay. That's our picture of Zinc. Zinc was a normal zebra in every way. She had four legs, two ears, one nose, one mouth, one tail, and spots. All the other zebras, even her mother and father and brother, had stripes. Because Zinc had spots, the other zebras wouldn't play with her. Because the other zebras had stripes, they thought that Zinc was odd. One day, Fink said to Zinc, Why do you have spots? They're so weird, Zinc said to Fink. Well, why do you have stripes? They're so weird. Sometimes we think of things that are not like us are weird. They're not really. That's an elephant. He doesn't have stripes or spots, does he? 
Zink and Fink couldn't decide who was right. No one in the Lipsis jungle seemed to have an answer for them. Finally, Zink and Fink went home to ask their parents, which of us is weird, they asked. Neither of you, their parents said. Whatever you are is what you are, said their mother. Whatever you are is what you are. You can't change that. It's just what you are. We're all different, said their father. Being different makes you special. And then everyone nuzzled. And Fink and Zink went out to play. Just a nice story that shows some zebras and shows us how to get along. So that's so important. Zink the zebra over there. Okay. I didn't have a game last week. I don't really have a game this week, but I have a suggestion for you. Go outside and be zany. <laughs> have fun. It's so beautiful out. We've been waiting for this nice weather for a very long time. So make sure you get outside and have fun. Do some zany, crazy things. But I also have a song for you. <laughs> Just a quick song. We all know that if you're happy and you know it, this one fits with the letter C, so couldn't pass up using it. If you're loud and you know it, zip your lips, especially if you're in the library. Although we're not a super shushy library, but if you're gonna be really loud, zip your lips. <laughs> and maybe if you're playing um, at home and baby brother or sister is sleeping, you might wanna zip your lips. Sometimes it's good and okay to be loud. Other times we have to zip our lips, so. If you're loud and you know it, zip your lips. If you're loud and you know it, zip your lips. If you're loud and you know it, then your mouth is going to show it. If you're loud and you know it, zip your lips. <laughs> zip one more time. If you're loud and you know it, zip your lips. Zip. If you're loud and you know it, zip your lips. Zip. If you're loud and you know it, then your face, your mouth is going to show it. <laughs> if you're loud and you know it, zip your lips. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. So go outside, do some zany stuff. Come in and tell us about it at the library. We'd love to hear about your zany things. All right. This is our zany zebra. I didn't try to make him look like a zebra zebra. We're just coloring, we're just making our letter Z zebra striped. There we go. And the reason this is a little harder is to give it definition. I did black and then I put white over it. If that's too much, then you just do the white and put the white right on your red. Okay, bear with us while we work through the black and white, but I think it makes it look nice and sharp. So you need a background color, which you could use anything, but you realize I haven't used red at all whole year for a background color, so red. And do you know the joke? What's red, black and white and red all over? A zebra with a sunburn. Uh -oh. <laughs> so it seemed appropriate to use the red background when I remembered that joke. But you need a background, you need white, and you need black. And if you're going to do the black behind the white, you need a big piece of black, okay? Let me put it up here. I think we still have room for a piece we're working on. Oh, well, we're going to turn the camera a little bit. There we go. There we go. Okay. Take that down. 
I need the scissors. So tape on this. Miss <laughs> oh, Kim, it's ready for lunch. Are you guys ready for lunch? <laughs> I need to have breakfast. <laughs> it's kind of running late this morning. Can you see that? Yes, we can. All right. Oops, I guess I made it so you can see. There we go. I think we can see the zebra hand one we're working on. Okay. Z is not terribly tricky to make. It's a little tricky here where you, the the, the uh, um, pieces overlap to make it look smooth. But you know what? We're not going to worry about that. We're just going to leave it a little bit jaggedy. It's okay. And we're going to make a big zebra. So we're going to cut the black pieces out. We're going to glue them on. We're going to cut the white pieces out. We're going to glue those on top of the black ones. The white pieces are going to be just a little bit smaller than the black ones. So we might, I think we'll cut everything so that we can compare them easy and then we'll glue. Okay? So you want your, your glue wide maybe about like a finger and a half up to your second knuckle wide. Whatever you do, you just make the white, if you're using the white with black, make that a little bit smaller, right? all the way to the top. And this is going to be a little bit too long to get all of our things in the bait. We can't make it. If you cut this way, it's not long enough. I tried. <laughs> That's too long, it ends up being. So, after I'm going to cut off about this much, which is about. Same. So you're making like kind of square. Save that because you can use that for your stripes. Okay. I'm going to sit that right there on my computer. Oh, I was hungry. <laughs> and I learned eat more. Okay. So pretty much like that. And then I used, I used what was left, is where you cut that first so it makes it shorter. And then I trimmed those a little bit too. So try to make them about as wide as your first piece was, okay? Maybe hold it up to measure and get your finger there. One. We need two because we need a top and a bottom, right? Okay. That big piece black down. And we do. They're almost the same size. Okay. One's a little bit wider. It's okay. It doesn't really matter. I just went close, not like. Uh, and, uh, okay. So then we need a full size piece of our white. Again, we cut top to bottom. Yes, we're going to cut top to bottom. <sighs> bottom to top and you're going to make it thinner. I don't want to cut right here. I want to come over and cut here so it's not as fat. So we get that black outline. Or if you're just using white then you can make it as fat as you want. And then sandwich them together. And what I'm not going to cut right here, I'm going to pull it out just a little bit more because we want it to let's see in the end, just make that piece a little bit bigger. See how it each end you can see the black. Okay. And do the same thing with 
the other two black pieces, okay? So again, remember skinnier. Cut them. Put that white piece away. And see how you see all the edges around, but of course it's too long here. And pull it out a little more. Cut it off. Slide it back. Do that with both of them. Line them up. Pull it out more. Cut it off. All right. But we so now you have three pieces of black and three pieces of white. And we're going to put the black on first. I can't even tell which I did first. I don't think it matters in the black. I don't think I put the big one on first. So get our glue stick. Get glue. I've gone through a lot of glue sticks this year. So. Glue, 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 glue. She made up a glue song. This is the way we glue our pieces, glue our pieces, glue our pieces. This is the way we glue our pieces every Thursday morning. <laughs> to go at an angle. And here you need to have it so there's enough room for his uh, his mane. So we also need enough room. All these black and white pieces they're just blending together. You can't see the <laughs> I'm gonna move my white pieces over here. <laughs> I'm just gonna go like that. Oh, you know what? I have this happened yesterday. They ended up still being too long. So put them both together. And I cut off another good chunk because it really doesn't matter if they're a little bit short, but it does matter if they're too long. Okay. And then you have to make your white short too. Cut off another good chunk of that. Mm -hmm. All right. There we go. Okay. So, scissors out of the way. All the extraneous paper out of the way. All those pieces that you cut off, you can save those for the stripes and whoops oh dear okay. the stripes and his nose and all sorts of things okay um, here we go gluing more pieces this is the way we glue our pieces glue our pieces glue our pieces this is the way we glue our pieces early in the morning Remember learning that song in kindergarten or first grade and have kindergarten. And we learned this is the way we wash our clothes. But the motions for washing the clothes were like washing your clothes with an old, what they call it, um, washboard, which is looks like a piece of metal and has little ribs in it, like the inside of cardboard. And you scrub your clothes on it to get them clean, get the dirt out of them. And that was not the way we washed our clothes. And that was kind of funny. And okay, let's go our other one. This would be the top of our zebra. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
crap. We have to have room for his nose to be round a little bit. What is that tape? It's not sticking at all. I'm going to tape that down more. It didn't seem like it was very sticky tape when I put it on there, so I guess I was right. Hopefully that will stay. Okay. All right. Yep, that really sticks up. See? It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Now, we're going to do, I can tell from this one that I did our straight across pieces first. So, let's do that. And remember, when you put them in, don't line them up with an edge. Put them in the middle, okay? Oops. Oh, dear. I wrinkled mine. Let's see. I think it'll be fine. There we go. See? Nice little outline. Okay, glue your top, top piece or your bottom piece, depending on which one you didn't start with. I think this is our regular brand of tape. <laughs> can get it to stay up there long enough to do our craft. Okay. The last one is going to go with this. Okay. And more glue. Lots and lots of glue. You probably want to try and get out as close to the edges as you can just so it stays nice. And flat. Nothing really worth sticking underneath anything on this one. So I like using the purple glue on top of white. You can really see it. And make sure you can see that black all the way around it if you're doing the black and white. All right, there we go. There's our Z. Okay, that took a while. Hopefully the rest of it will be much quicker because what we have to do is a nose, an ear, some mane, and of course, his stripes. Although, you know, if you wanted to, you could make our Zinc the Zebra and make him have spots. Maybe you could make two. You could make Fink and Zinc. But if you wanted to, you could do dots go a hole punch that would be great for making dots or you can cut dots the way that we learned how to do it with the squares and you cut off the corners mm -hmm. that could be fun i didn't think about that i should have done one zinc and one fink okay first i'm going to grab some of the little pieces that i cut off and see if any of those are useful well a couple of them are going to be useful for our stripes this one might be useful for our nose. You pretty much want it as wide as your piece is. This one's a little short. That's better. Okay. Oh, there's my scissors. So basically, you're going to take a rectangle and you're going to trim the corners. Make it round, like kind of like a circle. See? There you go. Now we're just going to glue it right there on his nose. Okay. It's funny how it doesn't look very nose-like when you start. <laughs> and then the more that you work on your, your animal, suddenly you're like, oh, now I see it. It's usually when you put the eyes on. And you're going to want to glue all the back of this. All the back of it. And right out to the end there. You can cover up some of that white, that's fine. But nothing wants to stay on this board today. Just stay a little bit longer. No point cutting tape on it, apparently. 
There's our nose. Okay. And then I'm going to need to use some other paper anyway, so I'm just going to cut. This is the paper that I worked off yesterday. It's already getting used up a little bit, so I'm going to use that one some more. We need to make a triangle. I think you can see his ear. His ear is just a triangle. Okay. So. Triangle. I'm just going to put it. Up here towards the front, but not all the way to the front. Okay, his eyes gonna go like right here. Okay, we're gonna we're using a googly eye. You can make an eye. It's gonna be on the white, so you could draw an eye. That away. Okay. If you have any of those scraps, you can either use them for to make your um, his mane or stripes. The mane is a little bit skinnier. A little bit skinnier. And we're only going to do the ends. I think we'll do that mane first. So if you're cutting, cut your little skinny pieces, about five or six. This is the only place where I was glad I didn't glue it all the way down to the bottom. Or all the way down to the bottom. All the way out to the edges because I like to stick these underneath there a little bit and they don't go out just super straight. They go out all over the place because their manes are kind of woo. Just go wherever they want to. Trying not to get it on my fingers. Just touch the very end. Go ahead. <laughs> There we go. You could make more if you wanted to. That would be fine. Now your Z stripes should at least cover your white. I did a whole bunch of them, so I'm going to show you. I basically cut a nice rectangle. And then, not this way, the shorter way. Too thick, but not too thin. If you get a really skinny one, you can stick it up there in your in the uh, main. Okay, there you go. Like that. You see that? Huh. Nose is itchy. Okay. Okay, I need a whole bunch more than five. Oh, I still have this one left, so I can cut those. And if they don't quite cover the white, that's okay too. It's art. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to cut another. <laughs> Quick hand. Another rectangle. And cut some more. Okay. I don't know how many that is. Sometimes, I think yesterday I cut a certain amount and I was like, okay, I just need a few more. So I just made a few more. Now, if you don't want to get it all over your fingers, you can do a line with your glue and then put it over it. That might be the less gluey way to do it. But you can always glue the back of it too. There we go. Well, I might actually have too many this time. It's hard to say. But, you know, if you keep a little scrap um, baggy, 
because these kind of things can come in useful for just anything you might want to do. Oh, now these are almost too long. I was already found being too short. Oh, okay. If they seem a little too long, put them more at an angle. We'll put them straight up and down and angle -y. Fun. I think it's fun. Making all the scrapers. Okay, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six left. Mm. One here. Then, kind of there. There we go. <laughs> Our eye, some glue on there, and maybe where you want to have it too, just a little bit of glue. And there he is. There's our zebra. Zany Zebra. Okay, well, you know, I really hope that you have enjoyed story times this year. It's not the same as being here, but I, I've enjoyed doing story times with you. And it's been a different experience for Miss Kim. She's learned a lot um, about how to do some different things this year. So that's been good for her too. What we'll be doing next fall, we don't know. Maybe we'll be back here all together. That would be nice. We're gonna try and think of a way to actually re-record this for people that can't come in. So we'll see. <laughs> all right, well, it is time to do our last goodbye. <laughs> Check back next week for just story with me and Rainbow. And maybe one of our, maybe our goodbye song. I don't know. I'm not sure what we're doing yet. See you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile, you be a sweet parakeet. Give a hug, ladybug. See you real soon, raccoon. Out the door, dinosaur. Take care, polar bear. And blow a kiss, goldfish. And one last time for our song. It's been quite the year. So long, farewell, Avita saying goodbye. We like to stay, but we must say goodbye. goodbye. Have a great summer. Come to summer reading. Come to the library. Bye. -bye.